Welcome to the Vegas Voice Celebrity Corner. I'm your host, Evan Davis, and I'll be bringing you a front row seat to behind the scenes interviews with performers and entertainers in Las Vegas. I'm fortunate I don't have one of those here today. Yeah, I know. Oh, no. By the way, I'm really thirsty. <laughs> what is this, a prop? Okay. My, my guest today, as you can see, <laughs> is crooner himself, Mark O'Toole. Hi, Hello, Evan. Mark. Hi, How are you? I'm doing great. It's so uh, good to be out in public. Uh, you know what I mean? This uh, is in public. But 14, okay. Well, 14 months, you know? I, I, mean, I, know. I haven't taken you... a shower. This is the first time I had to take a shower. Uh, oh, I, oh, I, I can think. tell. Like, yeah, whatever. Sure. Now, now, the first thing I have to ask you yeah. is a question you don't want me to ask oh you. Oh, my God. <laughs> right off if the you, top. If you were in front of the queen or in front of whoever, yeah. and there was only one song. Are we talking song, about Dan Roberts? <laughs> one song. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry about that. <laughs> There's many other queens here in town, but yeah. not him. That's All right. true. <laughs> so, so what, one song that will either get you into heaven or hell, what would that one song be? Well, my experience with what I do, which isn't much, I would probably go for a song that was known worldwide. You know, mm -hmm. I would probably pick a Sinatra song because everybody likes Sinatra. Mm -hmm. Now, which one? I don't know. But if you ask me what John, genre... It would be Frank Sinatra's song. Frank Sinatra's yeah, song. Yeah, sure. And and one God's of those, pretty old, right? One of those five thousand songs that yeah, he maybe uh, you make me feel so young, uh -huh. and uh, or you know something of Frank Sinatra's okay. song. My or, way, my way. Okay, my way. Well, yeah. to get to get back to some yeah. uh, interesting questions yeah. now. All right, now, did you always? Did you always feel that uh, show business was in your blood, and, and that's what you wanted to do? Or yeah, um, I was. A young kid, and I got into to performing by going to church. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of performers have done that. I think um, I remember um, going to church and singing in the choir. And I, I uh, at one time was thinking about becoming a priest or something. And, and I remember the priest saying to me, um, the greatest stage in the world is the altar. And that always stuck with me. Mm. And I thought, wow. Um, so I would always sing in the men's choir. And I was the youngest guy, and it kind of built up my confidence. We were behind a curtain. Uh, it was uh, the Immaculate Conception in Weymouth, Massachusetts, and it was a church in the round. Mm -hmm. And there was a curtain there, so nobody could see me, so I could build up my confidence. Right. And then I was about 15, this is my 45th year in show business, so I, I built up my confidence because nobody could see me. And then one day during a Christmas, uh, I think it was a you know uh, one of the big... Uh, times to go to church, they opened up the curtain and I had to do a solo. I did Ave Maria and I thought, wow. And it, it just kind of opened me up and I thought, you know what? After doing this for all these years in church, if it's good enough for God, it's going to be good enough for the public. So I put a little band together and then from there on, um, you know, I worked in every bar, pub, whatever. And then um, I, I was part of the Chippendales and I uh, hosted Chippendales for two years mm -hmm. when I got older, and um, I didn't strip. I, yeah. I didn't strip because there's nothing Thank to see here. God. Yeah, whatever. Uh, I'll send you pictures <laughs> later. So I did that, and then I got, I was doing character voices huh. um, on the radio, and then Jay Thomas, who was a huge star at the time, he was on Cheers, and he, he uh, was doing a big show in L.A., and uh, he said, would you like to come and write and help me produce my show in Hollywood. And I was 27. I was like, let's go. So went to Hollywood, then came here, and then auditioned for Star Search, and the, I couldn't get arrested. And then Star Search, just, you know, once you're on national television, just was like, wow. And then I, my phone wouldn't stop ringing, and then I was, I've been here for the last 30 years performing. Yeah, it's you know, great, so, yeah. it's great. You know, with the pandemic this last year, things closed down, and I know they're starting to open up again. How do you envision Vegas coming back? Well, I knew in the beginning, um, I was doing a radio show and uh, Clint Holmes called in and a lot of the people called in and I, I said, listen, I have a feeling, nothing surprises me because I've seen everything. Mm -hmm. I was kind of expecting something to happen. I really was. But I knew that the people that were gonna be hit the hardest were the entertainers. 
Um, and they were, and I think it's going to be a while still. I mean, even if people still mask up and social distance and get their shots, I think we're looking at another three, four, five, six months even of social distancing, wearing masks until we get to that herd immunity. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, everything's opening up, but I feel that the casinos right now are concentrating on gambling. That's where they're making their money. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're making their money with shows right now. I think slowly but surely, um, when things are conducive, where entertainers, uh, for instance, like Barry Manilow, he's supposed to come back and work at the Hilton or the Westgate. I don't think that's going to happen for a while because people of that stature who have thousands of people at a show, they're not going to come in and work for two, 300 people in the audience. And I think right now, none of the entertainment directors or the show managers or the people in charge are going to take responsibility for that yet. I think slowly but surely we will get there, but it's going to be, in my estimation, it's going to take another six months at yeah. least. I, I, I envision the lounge acts coming in first, at least getting back to that, since uh, since you can have, like you said, the big shows. Can't, you can't make money. Right. And so you're I, right. You're I think absolutely was, I mean, I can't on. wait to hopefully see lounge acts come back into all the hotels and start to I, I just talked to my agent, uh, my few agents, mm -hmm. um, one locally here, and um, there is nothing on the horizon right now. Uh, single acts, duos, trios, they will be booked because, again, it's low overhead. People can afford that. You know what I mean? But right now, big bands and big shows are not going to come back until that changes. You know? Yeah. Well, for instance, you, you're doing a show for the Vegas Voice. Never heard of them. On, uh, on the 24th of yeah. April yeah. at Sunset and McDonald Ranch. Can't wait. And you're doing actually two shows that night, a 4.30 and a 7 o'clock show. My first time on stage in 14 months. And I'm a little, I've never been, I'm not nervous, but the energy there is there. You know what I mean? I it's know, like I know. doing something for the first time and people are probably just going to come out to see if I got fat and they don't recognize me. <laughs> Who the hell knows what they're going to come out to see, but I got a good shows planned and it's going to, you know, once I'm out there on that stage, I think it's going to be like riding a bike. You know, people I think are dying for to go back out and, and, and be entertained. So yeah. I'm really looking forward and, to it. And both shows are already sold out. Yeah, don't come. You know, I'm not saying don't come. No, no, I need people. You can call, get on a waiting list. Hopefully something will happen. Maybe it'll open up a little more by... If, if they do, that would be great. I mean, but, I mean, don't come and... But come backstage with me. Did you let me finish? We're going to have a party. You know, even though they're not invited, you can still come and see me. You there know, is a green you. room there. Everyone will come to this green room. We'll do that. We'll have a big party. Yes. Um, I, I'm really looking forward to yeah, it. Yeah, me too. Me too. It's going to be uh, fun, exciting. Even though I don't perform because I can't sing or dance or, or in, tell jokes or anything. But, I lip sync. It's, um, I'm really not yeah, doing it. Hey, I can't even do that in time. But I'm excited to just get on the stage I'm, and say hi to everyone. Right. I mean, and I think, you know, there. I think that's what is happening. You, I know you have Genevieve coming up and Michael uh, Nugent, I right, think I saw right. the program. You know, I think people are just dying to get out there and feel normal. Mm -hmm. And you know what I mean? I think the lack of music, the lack of, of interaction with people, we all need that. We need, we need the love, we need the attention, we need to be, we need to be with each other again. And mm -hmm. I, think, I think there's been so much tension uh, with the politics and the way of the world that everybody just needs to get back to some sort of normalcy in their lives, mm -hmm. you know? And I think music will, Bring that back, hopefully. Yes, amen, brother. Yeah. Yes. Um, when when you do a show, mm. uh, I'm sure you do some kind of preparation to for that show. What what is your preparation backstage before? I and mean, what do you what do you do? Um, I think the most important thing you can do is um, have your audience as the focal point. I think a lot of entertainers sometimes sing for themselves and they're not paying attention to the audience. Mm -hmm. And you got to, before you walk down and you put your set list together, the very first thing I do is I look at the demographics of the people in the audience and I think to myself, who's watching me? What do they, what do they want to hear? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you know, um, I, you know, I perform yeah. on the cruise ships and the average age of most of the cruise ships I 
perform on is is dead. So, you know, <laughs> I, I look out there and I'm like, okay, these people want to hear songs they know. Right. And I see other entertainers coming on that are singing like Miley Cyrus or, uh, or, or Justin Bieber. And these older people are like, this is not what I grew up with. So I think the focal point is to stay on track, be prepared, do stuff that they want to hear. It's Bieber? I thought it was always Bieber. I don't know why. But I don't, maybe you have that on your mind all the time. Ever. So... <laughs> Talking about cruise ships, um, I know you've had a wild experience, and we don't have a lot of time left, but why don't you tell us about your last cruise? Yeah, last cruise was like finding Waldo. I was like stuck out. We went out there. I was ready to do a nice, I was on the Viking Sun, and it was supposed to be, uh, they brought me on as a part of the last part of a world cruise, and um, I was stuck in the, I was stuck. Uh, the president at the time said, you can't go to any ports because, and you have to be back in the USA on March 23rd of last year. March 20, well, they lost my luggage. They lost my passport. When I, they lost my visa twice. <laughs> so when I got to Saudi Arabia, they, I, would, I was ready to get on the plane. I could see the plane on the runway. No, you stay here. I go, I gotta get home. Went back on the ship. I thought I was leaving the ship for good. I was praising, I was like, dear Jesus, get me home. Because people in Vegas and all my friends around the country, they were praying for me because if I didn't get back in, into the country here by the 23rd, mm -hmm. I was basically in oh. a lot of trouble. So um, after losing my luggage and my visa and my passport, I, I literally, when I landed, when I got on that plane and we, we get into the United States, I was crying like a baby. People don't realize how lucky and fortunate we are to be living in the United States. Yeah. Yes, that's Period. true. That's true. Well, one last one last question I want to ask you. Um, yeah. Um, as far as influencing your career, who would you say is the one artist performer that that has had the most influence? Um, I think Frank Sinatra. There'll never be another Frank Sinatra. Um, I love the way he phrases, he sings. Mm -hmm. um, growing up, I did listen to a lot of Barry Manilow. Um, uh, and thank God, you know, I was smart enough to be able to put a show together and travel the world with Barry's music. Mm -hmm. So those people, I mean, I love everybody. I grew up with an eclectic, uh, like yourself, I'm sure, growing up, your parents had the stereo playing 45s and 33s yeah. playing from Patsy Cline to, you know, to uh, Willie Nelson, to whoever. So I love music, um, but I would have to say Sinatra, Manilo is my favorite, for yeah. sure. You know? Oh, good. Yeah. Uh, they're pretty much uh, everyone's nowadays. Yeah. Well, with that, I want to just uh, wrap it up. I want to thank Is Marco that what that means? Tool. He's, did you see no, him over what, there? What, he's what, like, going like this. He's like this. Cut? Was it cut? Was like, I don't know okay, what. I think he was picking us up. I don't, I don't know what he was doing. Oh, this. what does this mean? Me? I'm short. What is it? Touch the wall? What? What is? I can't. Anyway. I have no idea. It's good to thank see you. you. Thank you very much for being on Makes the sense. show. I can't it's, wait to I see know. you in two I, weeks. I, I can't. We're going to be two there. Two weeks. Already? Two weeks. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's we're great. We're going to be there. Yeah. Anyway. Well, I want to thank everyone for joining us, and we will see you next time. Thank you.